headquarters in Poland. In his bag, he has a film of the V2's first epochal launch. With it, he hopes to persuade Hitler of the new weapon's merit. We were on the verge of being shut down. We had to use the film to demonstrate convincingly that it was worth continuing the program. This time, von Braun does manage to fire the dictator's imagination. The silent presentation film and von Braun's running commentary end with the triumphant words, We've done it. The presentation worked. The program continued. Von Braun has done it. Hitler not only gives the project the priority the Rocketeers have hoped for, he also awards his new armorer a professorship. What's more, Hitler orders large-scale production of the V2. Dreams of 6,000 rockets a month. He hopes for a miracle, for a wonder weapon. Professor von Braun knows that Hitler's hopes are illusory, but he does what he can. After Stalingrad, hopes were dashed. Very few people believed that the war could be turned around by a temperamental diva, which is what some of us used to call the A4, because you never could predict where it would come down. You really had to be a fanatic to believe that. British intelligence have known about the secret goings-on at Pinamunda since 1942. And on the 18th of August, 1943, at 10 past one in the morning, 598 British bombers reached the Pinamunda Army Rocket Center. Their mission, to eliminate the brains behind the mysterious new missile. The nighttime bombardment leaves 733 dead. Nearly all of the top people are unhurt. The R&D work continues undiminished. The production operation ordered by Hitler has to be transferred to a safer place, and that place is quickly found, at Kornstein in the Harz Mountains. Thousands of prisoners from Himmler's concentration camps are forced to create an underground factory in the mountain. 20,000 people die in the process. The conditions here can hardly have been unknown to the Peenemünde elite, headed by General Dornberger and Werner von Braun. I don't know how much von Braun or even Dornberger had to do with it, but they were naturally in favor of production being maintained. If it didn't, that would have been the end of Peenemünde and the entire rocket program. Production of the V-2 starts in December 1943. Meanwhile, von Braun works tirelessly perfecting his rockets. He has a new ally, Himmler, who back in 1940 issued him with a black SS uniform. He talked to Dornberger, of course, and also to some of the others in high positions, and all of them advised him that it was not something he could refuse. In summer 1944, Preparations get underway to put the new weapon into service. The first mobile launch tables are positioned on the Atlantic coast. Goebbels addresses the nation. After the heavy bombardment of Berlin, I said the time would come when the British would pay for their actions. The British press scornfully asked whether the new weapon I announced at the time was an invention of the armament ministry or the propaganda ministry. I saw no need to enlighten the British on that point. The longer they think it is a myth, the better. Surprise is also a weapon. The 8th of September, 1944. From Brown's baby, a masterpiece of German engineering is deployed for the first time. The 
targets for the V2, now officially hailed as a wonder weapon, are London, Paris, Antwerp. More than 6,000 people die. I've been in London when V2s were coming in. I think at that time, uh, the V2s were pretty mysterious to just about everyone, the British and the Americans. Um, the uh, intelligence agencies knew about the operations in Germany at Pinamunda and uh, uh, the Hartz Mountains and such as that. But as for the general run of the mill, People, uh, they didn't know anything of the, of the persons that were responsible for the uh, rocket. The name Werner von Braun is known only to insiders. The German newsreel waxes lyrical. The sleek steel body soars into the stratosphere at breathtaking speed, the commentator says. A V-2 makes its way to England. The trail the rocket leaves in the sky will still be visible when the missile reaches its target. Ultimately, it was a weapon of war developed for the armed forces, and it was obvious that it would eventually be used against enemies like England, against London, and Norwich, which was also heavily bombed. We naturally didn't hear about that until later, after the weapons had been deployed, and in a way, we were naturally pleased that our work had borne fruit. On the other hand, of course, we were also aware of the problems that still existed in connection with the V-2. Wir waren uns natürlich auch zum anderen der Probleme bewusst, die noch mit dem V2 in Verbindung standen. We knew there was still a great deal of work to be done. Dass noch viel, viel Arbeit zu tun war. Von Braun is a realist. He knows that his wonder weapon will not work miracles. That Germany has lost the war. So he becomes less and less concerned with how to improve and perfect the rocket. Increasingly, he wonders what will happen after the war, after the defeat. Where will he go with his valuable expertise from Peenemunde? In autumn 1944, I'd gone for a walk with von Braun by the sea. When we were alone, he said, I'd like to be frank with you. My bags are packed. I have all the findings from the rocket program. I'm going to the Americans. I'm going to finish my rockets with the Americans' help. Roger, 12.02, we copy it. 